Over the weekend, Ottawa PD reported nearly 200 arrests and 76 vehicles towed as police forced the remaining truckers and protesters to leave the downtown area of the city. Last week, the Ottawa police chief resigned after more than three weeks of demonstrations. The police chief had faced criticism for not being tough enough on the truckers. Over the weekend, the new police chief flexed his muscles and deployed pepper spray and stun grenades on the protesters. According to The Guardian, police with rifles reportedly approached protesters and smashed truck windows. Here you can see the police beating a truck driver while he's on the ground, repeatedly kicking the man. Footage from a longer clip shows the man exiting his truck in surrender before the police beat him. But despite the crackdown, protests in support of the Freedom Convoy erupted across Canada. Tens of thousands marched in Calgary, Toronto, and here's one that took place in Quebec. Deputy Opinion Editor at Newsweek, Batya Ungar Sargan, joins us to discuss the series of events now. Batya, welcome. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Yeah, so what is your you know, opinion on the latest news with the truckers and everything that's going on? It looks like you know, the crackdown has finally arrived. Canada tried, you know, almost sort of creative, uh, well, maybe we can just take their money or stop them from getting money and, you know, before we go with the police route. And then like, no, I guess we're going to do the police route. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think we've all recognized how the pandemic has overseen the largest transfer of wealth from the lower classes, the working class and the middle class to the elites. What we're seeing now is civil liberties themselves being cast by elite liberal media and politicians as essentially a privilege of the pajama class. This looks like it's about politics. It's not. It's about government overreach in a case of a labor strike, an enormous labor action of working class Canadians saying no to government overreach, no to vaccine mandates that our own Supreme Court has, you know, deemed unconstitutional. And in response to this huge working class, you know, the workers of the world literally united and the left smeared them as fascists and now is cheering on these totalitarian measures towards them, freezing their bank accounts, taking their money, arresting them on trumped up charges like, you know, things like mischief or consulting to commit mischief if these made up charges, it's really a travesty. And so what is preventing the Canadian authorities from just saying, you know what, uh, case counts are going the direction that we want them to. Uh, we're just going to lift these mandates like we, they were like unless they're clinging to the idea that they were actually going to keep them in place forever, then at some point the mandates were going to end. So why not just make it this point? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's for the same reason that nobody in government has met with the truckers even once. You know, Justin Trudeau declared a state of emergency using the Emergencies Act, which is only allowed to be used if as a last resort. But he didn't even try the first resort of speaking to the truckers once. Not a single person from government has walked out and asked those people what they want because it's not about what they want. It's not about the mandates. It's about control. It's about the class divide. And it's about who gets to have a say and who doesn't get to have a say and the upward transfer of wealth and power to liberal progressive elites at the expense of the working class. Well, speaking of which, Canadian journalists were caught in the mix of protesters and felt the sting of Trudeau's emergency powers. Now civil liberties and civil rights groups are expressing outrage after Ottawa police threatened members of the media with arrest for reporting on the crackdown. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, I mean, we saw some of that a little bit with Black Lives Matter protests, too. I remember, you know, some journalists being like hassled by police, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, police power is, is not going to be on the side of the cause. It's always deployed, you know, break up peop, uh, uh, protests, arrest people, jail them, et cetera. And uh, that actually that's a that's a lesson I, I wish the, the, the right would take to heart more often that, you know, the police are not your friends. But, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're seeing this just b b being enforced by, right, by the, by the, the good liberals, the, 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 the kind of nice, feel-good type Trudeau stuff. Nope, doesn't feel very good now. 
I mean, it, the 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 the, uh, the Freedom Convoy started off being smeared as fascists and Nazis by mainstream liberal media in Canada and here in America, and the mainstream liberal media that smeared these people as fascists for daring to stand up for their rights as workers ended up by cheering on actual fascist measures against them. Right? Actual, right. you know, centralization right. of government, actual taking away their civil liberties, actually, literally freezing their bank accounts, and and this is retroactive, right? So if you gave 40 bucks to this protest when it was still just a labor strike, you know, before the government went crazy and invoked the Emergencies Act, if you, you know, sent that money, you know, you're you're a Canadian and you just feel, okay, I'm sick of these mandates enough already. I want to support these freezing truckers standing up for liberty. You now are on a list to where you can be debanked by order of the government. I mean, this is wild stuff. Where do you where do you see this going in in Canada, Batya? What's been the reaction? Because you're you're right. It's it's fascinating that the mainstream media was kind of uniformly mainstream media in Canada was kind of uniformly hostile toward these truckers. Yet public opinion, yes, is tilted against the truckers, but not in the numbers that you might expect from the treatment that they were getting in in the media. And so, where do you think this heads next? Well, this fizzle do canadians expect this to fizzle out or is this the start of something bigger so there's going to be a vote today in parliament about whether you know the invo invocation of the emergencies act was justified so we'll see how that goes um tamara lich one of the organizers of the protest is in prison um <laughs> for for conspiracy to commit mischief right literally you know you, you can't even make this stuff up these trumped up charges you know there has been over the weekend a wellspring of support for them i think even a lot of canadians who didn't support the protest when it was going on are now horrified by you know the overreach. But, you know, Ryan, as an American, you know, a U.S. American, I'm much more worried about what I'm seeing here. And I'm curious what you think about this. How is it that all the people like we're on the left, right? How is it that the left is cheering on this government overreach, cheering on this fascism, cheering on this authoritarianism, right? They recognized every time in Black Lives Matter correctly when there was police overreach, when there was government overreach, when people were arrested unfairly, right? Those people, though, they, they're going to get due process, right? You know, to the extent that people of color get due process in America, right? They will get, they have access to that. That has been suspended in Canada. So Ryan, I'm really curious where you see this going on the American left. Like, how is it that our elite media, you know, is so in the bag for this authoritarian overreach? I'm seeing a lot of the same patterns on among liberals now that I saw among conservatives during Black Lives Matter. If if you asked a, if you you know poked a conservative asked them about the Black Lives Matter protests they would tell you that they were you know coordinated at a high level by Soros and other you know uh, big money foundations mm -hmm. uh, that this wasn't actually spontaneous that it do, right. didn't represent any actual on the ground movement and that would be the way that they would kind of discredit it they would also point to elements within it uh, that either were engaging in violence or engaging in extreme rhetoric. And then they would use that to then discredit the entire thing. And you're seeing liberals, you know, do the same thing uh, in reverse, saying that these are not spontaneous protests, that actually uh, there's you know, right wing organizers behind them, right wing money uh, behind them. And, and, uh, and, then, and then using kind of elements within it to paint the entire thing as you know, a bastion of, say, white nationalism or white Yeah, the white smearing of the whole thing as Nazism is why Trudeau himself has done that, right? He said that in that exchange with a member, a, a conservative member of parliament uh, on the floors right. of parliament, where he says, oh, OK, so you're going to stand with Nazis. Well, that's what you're right. doing. Right. And I think it's a mis and I think I think it's good. And I've done it myself uh, to call out the elements within it that are trying to take legitimate and righteous anger and and channel it into an ugly white supremacist direction. Like there are elements within that. Right. And it is good. at every protest under at the sun. At every protest. And it, but and it's good to call those out so that th that doesn't become normalized. And, right. and people at the protest don't think, oh, these are my friends. My, right. my friends also say all of these things. I guess I believe that, too. Uh, but if you, you but if you use that to then just undermine and dismiss all of the anger, then you're you're doing the work of those extremist organizations. Right. You're actually just pushing people into their arms.
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think from what I could tell from doing, you know, extensively looking into this, there was one Confederate flag at that protest, the, the one that had 100,000 people at it. There was one Nazi flag. And then there were a bunch of signs comparing Trudeau to the Nazis and Hitler to the Nazis and, you know, government overreach in terms of COVID restrictions to the Nazis. Now, I am totally against those comparisons. I think they're disgusting and they amount to Holocaust minimization. But to act like a gross comparison comparison between government overreach today and the Holocaust and the Nazis is the same as waving a Nazi flag, right? That's so obviously facetious, right? right? That move is because the point of those comparisons is to show how evil Trudeau is because right. he's like the Nazis, right? And that right. move to smear the working class as racist, we see that here with Trump all the time with his supporters, to smear people who are pushing back against elite progressive politics to stand up for their own you know, economic interests, we're going to see that. And we have seen that again, again, seeing them smear as fascists. And it's awful because like, like you said, Ryan, white supremacy is actually really bad. We do actually have to call it out wherever it shows its ugly head. But here, what's happening is, is elite liberal progressives and leftists are using the smear of Nazism and white supremacy to silence legitimate working class grievances. And we have to call that out as well. Right. So they're silencing a, a movement against tyranny, right? Forcing people to abide by uh, health mandates on, on all these fronts. I mean, look, you can argue that they are necessary infringements on our liberties. I would not argue that, but certainly people could argue that. But you can't argue that they're definitely infringements on liberties. So re resisting them is resisting, you know, broad government power. So it's, 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 it's actually anti-fascist in some ways. So it, it, it's just ridiculous to see it characterized exactly the opposite. Anyway, Bacha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. And we'll be back with more Rising right after this.